Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to introduce you guys to some reasons why I think that DaVinci Resolve 17, the free version, is a really solid choice for your video editor, especially compared to other free video editing software. So the really basic answer for this video is that in Resolve you get access to a lot of extra features that you wouldn't see in other free video editors. And you get that also with reasonable performance and stability. So it's a real problem if your video editor crashes all the time or if it is basically unusable even with a mid-range computer because it just moves so slowly. That would really disrupt your workflow and you want it to be more usable than that. So that's a really important factor to take into consideration when picking out a video editor. So to go beyond those basic reasons, in Resolve you get access to all of the pages in Resolve even with the free version rather than having to upgrade to the $300 studio version. So the pages, you can see them down here at the bottom. You have Media, Cut, Edit, Fusion, Color, Fairlight, and Deliver. Each of these pages represent a different stage of the workflow for editing your video from start to finish. So as you might expect, over on the Media page is where you would focus on importing media assets into your project. So that would be stuff like video, audio, images, whatever you need to use for your final video composition. And then the cut and edit pages are two different workflows for doing the basic edits in your video. So that would be stuff like slicing clips into multiple clips, adding video effects to your clips, adding titles in, video transitions, and keyframe animations for when you want to have a property change over time, such as the zoom level. So on a really abstract level, the difference between cut and edit is that the edit page is more full featured it has access to everything and then the cut page is intended to be a bit more streamlined for when you just kind of need to do more basic edits though especially with resolve 17 a lot of extra features have been brought over from the edit page to the cut page as well for instance the video inspector in the top right uh, you can see that this is where you can change values on properties like zoom or position of your clips and you can also animate them using these keyframing gray diamonds over on the right. So using the inspector was really important for doing more complicated edits, but it does seem like as time goes on, they're bringing more of the edit page features over to the cut page as well. Okay, so on the edit page, before we dive into Fusion, I'm gonna drop a random 3D title onto our timeline so I can demonstrate the Fusion page a little bit better. So let's go grab this digital glitch effect and I will just drop it onto the timeline. So this title is going to take a minute to pre-render. It's one of the more complicated title effects. But if we go over to the Fusion page, we'll be able to show what all of the nodes that build this effect look like. So the Fusion page is a node-based effects editor. You can use it to build 3D scenes inside of Resolve. Uh, you want to do 3D modeling here, but you can import 3D models made in other programs like Blender if you want to use them in your video projects. And you can also use them to, of course, build out 3D titles and that sort of thing. So here we're looking at the node setup for that digital glitch title. So here we're looking at the digital glitch title node composition and we can double click on the node group here. You know it's a node group because it's underlined with the yellow there. If we double click that, it looks a lot more complicated because to actually build a 3D title, you need all of these little nodes. Let me pull this up here so we can look at the whole thing. So some of these nodes are gonna be adding text to the screen. Others are going to be blurring the title out at different periods of time. And then nodes like the keyframe stretcher allow you to take a title and expand its duration without having to actually come back in here. Basically, it'll take the beginning and end of that title and reposition them as you increase the duration of the title. So we're just taking a quick look at this to demonstrate the point that in Resolve, you have a lot of flexibility and tools if you want to create effects for your video projects. And generally speaking, you wouldn't see this sort of thing in a random basic free video editor. Okay, so let's jump over to the color page really quickly. So on the color page, you have the ability to mask out part of your video clip if you want to apply an effect to one area but not another. You can also track objects around the screen using power tools and the tracker tab. And then of course, as the page name would imply, you have plenty of tools for doing color grading. So I'm just gonna gloss over them in this video for the sake of time, but you have color wheels for adjusting the color based on the brightness of different areas in your screen. 
They have a new color warper web and grid tools. So you can adjust color hue against uh, luminescence and hue versus saturation. You have color curves, which are similar. So you adjust one property against another. So for instance, hue versus hue, you take an input hue, the original color, and then you can adjust that hue towards a different color. So if you want to make your yellows into reds, you could do that using this graph here. And then as for masking, you can use a qualifier tool when you want to grab a certain color from your screen. So if you use the eyedropper here, then you'll see in this corrector node the areas which you have selected, and it will exclude all of the areas which don't fall into this qualifier. As an alternative to selecting by color, you can also use power windows. So basically selecting a region of your screen and the power windows are really handy because you can use them on things like a person's face. Go over to the tracker tool and then use the tools here to have the power window follow the object inside of it across the screen. Of course, sometimes you have to play around with it a little bit. It doesn't always work perfectly the first time, but I have found I got pretty good results with it in general, especially if the object moving is rather slow. Like a person walking around, but the camera is staying focused on them, keeping them in the middle of the shot would be a pretty good example of an easy tracking. All right, so then we also have the Fairlight tab over here. So for more advanced audio editing, you can come over here and apply a bunch of audio effects to your tracks. So for instance, if you needed to come in here and adjust your audio after recording, you could use tools like noise reduction to get rid of some of the background noise. And then another example would be running your voice through the dialogue processor here, which gives you many different effects that will try to improve your audio quality. It's not always necessary, but if you have voiceovers, you can come in here, select the gender, and then just adjust the knobs here a little bit and, until you like how the voice sounds in your videos. You also have standard mixer controls, equalizer, dynamics, the ability to increase or decrease the audio for each of your tracks individually, because you can have many audio tracks, of course. There's also a free sound library you can download to use with Resolve, so a bunch of free sound effects that you can use with your videos. And then tools like ADR are pretty handy for recording a script with cue times for each of the dialogue that needs to be spoken, going ahead, taking a bunch of takes for that audio, and then selecting the best one that you want to use for your final voiceover narration. So the point of that bit is just that there's a lot of stuff in Resolve that you wouldn't see in other free video editors. Of course, you don't need to know all of this at the start, but it's there when you're ready to learn more. And then just glossing over the Deliver tab, standard exporting tools. There are, of course, presets for YouTube, Vimeo, and Twitter. So for instance, using the YouTube preset is just going to be a really handy way for getting your video to look good and be optimized for YouTube without really too much trouble. So uh, pretty solid there, and you can queue up multiple jobs at once if you need to do 10 video exports at once. All right, let's talk about the rest of the stuff. In Resolve's free version, you can do up to a 4K resolution export. So if I go into File, Project Settings here, then we can see in video format that this goes up to 4K UHD. So if you're making videos for sites like YouTube, then I would think for probably 99% or even more than that are only going to need to go up to 4K resolution. Even 1080p would be good enough. You'll notice all my tutorial videos are in that resolution. No real reason to go more than that. So already having 4K resolution out of the box is really more than sufficient. I believe that can go higher in the studio version up to 8K resolution, I think. So another big thing about Resolve is that it is cross platforms. So you can get versions of it for Windows, Mac and Linux which is particularly handy for Linux users because a bunch of the paid video editors may not be supported on that operating system. So another point that's especially going to be relevant for people kind of forward thinking about this is the Resolve gets updated pretty often. So I started using it, I think, at version 14, which came out in 2016. And that was when they added the Fairlight page to Resolve. And then version 15 was 2018 that added the fusion page, a really big deal if you like making your own effects. And then version 16 had the cut editing page, the edit workflow was always there. And after that came version 16.1. And now we're on the beta version of 17, which initially became publicly available in November 2020. So version 17 didn't add any new tabs, but it did enhance a lot of functionality and add new features to some of the tabs. So for instance, the color web and color grid tools that you see here on the color page, those are brand new to Resolve 17. 
So the basic editing tools are pretty easy to use and very responsive. So if I'm on the edit page, I hit B to switch into blade mode. I just left click at a couple points. I want to make cuts. And then if I want to delete what was between those two cut points, I can just left click hold, select it and hit delete on my keyboard. And by default, that's going to ripple over. If you don't want the rippling, you could just hit Control X instead and remove it immediately. So hopefully you can see how it's pretty easy to use tools like that. It's quite responsive. There's also the trim tool. So if you hit T to go into trim mode, you can pull at the edges of your clips and then adjust how much of the duration you want to keep in your timeline. Hit A to go to selection mode, drag your clips around to different video tracks if you choose. And then of course, for all that you have snapping enabled, you can unlink your clips. You can add markers to your clips or parts of your timeline if you need to take notes. And uh, just overall, I would say that the basic video editing workflow is really smooth to use. Also, you can't see it in this stock clip, but when you do record with voiceovers, having the audio waveforms here showing when someone starts and stops talking is extremely helpful. I really think that's something every video editor program should include and enable by default out of the box, but I've seen some cases where that isn't the case. Okay, so also uh, you do have a large amount of default titles, video effects, transitions, and audio effects. So let's close the media pool over here and then we can just focus on this side over here. So here you have the default titles. This is a fresh installation of Windows. So all of these are default and out of the box. Uh, some of these are once again new to Resolve 17. So you have Fusion titles there, which of course, as I was showing before you can take over to the timeline and if you need to deconstruct them and edit them you could do that on the fusion page or you can make your own with a fusion composition basically a blank clip and an adjustment clip which if you make some changes to it like zooming in will apply to all of the underlying clips underneath it i do have videos on that if you want to know more about what i'm talking about and if we go to the top of our toolbox, we can find video transitions here. So if we position our timeline cursor down here, then we can actually hover over the video transitions to see a preview of what the transition will look like with the default settings. So you can kind of just scrub through it and see how it moves between two different clips. Now, because we're moving from the same clip to the same clip here, it doesn't make a lot of sense. So let's actually put some black space here and then we can see something a little bit more apparent. So that's basically the idea there. Also, the same thing works with the open effects. So if I go down to light rays and I hover over it, you can see the default light rays effect as it would appear if we dropped it onto the clip. And of course, with any of these effects, uh, we can go over to the inspector and edit them further. So under effects now that there is a light rays effect. And I did that just by dropping it on the clip, by the way. So now we go to inspector effects, open effects, and we have our light rays effects. So you can control some of the settings here and change how the final effect is going to look like. And of course, there's audio effects, some of which we talked about earlier. And if you create your own combination of effects and you want to save them for later, then you can do that with fusion composition clips or adjustment clips. So I'm just going to put an adjustment clip here on the timeline. We won't do anything with it. But one trick I found is that by going to view and then show power bins, you can click on the master power bin and drag your clips in here so that you can apply them to future videos. So fusion compositions you create by creating a series of 3D nodes over on the fusion page or adjustment clips if you apply any effects here that you want to apply to underlying. So this is one basic way that you can save resources for later and then bring them into other projects. Another way is saving fusion compositions as setting files or macros. I have videos going into that in more detail. But I think that's about where we're going to cut it for this video. So I know that this video has gone on for quite a while. There's a lot to talk about when it comes to Resolve 17. But I hope that this video has given all of you a good idea of why Resolve 17 is a really good choice for a free video editor if you're looking for one. So I've been Chris. Thanks for watching. And if you want to learn more about Resolve, check out the other videos on my channel. I have a lot of content about it. And hopefully I'll see you guys in my future video content.